Yes, dear friends, today we will talk about abdominal muscle training, about how you can make it so that by training the abdominal muscles, you will achieve that the abdomen will look like this. That is, it will kind of bulge forward like this. Or you train and thus it, on the contrary, is drawn in for you how to achieve such and such a result. That is, you can, depending on what you want, use certain exercises and achieve the result that you desire. The abdominal muscles, the rectus abdominis. That's what we're interested in right now. It starts here, from the ribs. Here's the sternum. From this part, it ends here. Or conversely, it starts here and ends here. In general, one end is attached to the ribs of the chest. The other end is attached to the pubic bone, to the pelvis. And they have a certain length of these muscles. And it allows these two points to move relative to each other. They can approach. They can move away. They are getting closer to each other. And, well, there is a reasoning, an opinion, that there is a lower and upper press. There is someone who says that you can pump the lower ones separately, pump the upper ones separately. Someone claims it's impossible, yet they collaborate anyway. It works together. The press works together. That's how it is. But the movement that the press makes, it can be in two variants. In three variants. The press can make a movement. We have a navel here for clarity. Relative to it, we will sort out this situation. Unclear which we found ourselves in. So everyone has a navel. Most people have it. And relative to it, at the level of the navel, a certain level at which it is located, the so-called navel level, and relative to it as a result of tension of the rectus abdominis muscle. Three variants can occur. One, the rectus abdominis muscle tensed, and at the same time the chest and the pelvis approached, they were here. They ended up here, like this, like this, like this. They did it like this, for example. This happened. The press is usually pumped like this. It happens more often, although no. The second variant is when the pelvis remained in place where it was, and this upper part of the rib approached the navel. The second so-called variant is above the navel. The movement occurred. The press contracted, all the movement occurred more here. And the third variant is when this part pulled up the navel. And this remained its own length. Pay attention and do not get distracted. There are three variants of this movement today. The question arises for many. Which one to choose? It all depends on what you want. If you want. If you want the most fabulous stomach, the kind that's noticeably so. If you want a belly that hangs over your belt, that gives a certain authoritative look to a person and commands some respect. When you see such a person who has a certain experience and a belly, you need to choose options when you do an exercise with the movement of the upper part. You shorten this upper part. You reduce the distance between the navel and the chest. That is, here, if you make it smaller, you will automatically have a greater distance here. The intra-abdominal pressure does not change. It does not go anywhere. And if the distance here has become less, all the contents of the stomach will also change its position. Everything that is in the stomach. If there is less space here for it, it starts to drop a little down. The intra-abdominal pressure will increase. The intestine will slightly change its position. And if there is no place for it at the top, here, for the contents of the stomach, it starts to strive down here. There is also not much space at the bottom. You see, there is not much space here. And this intra-abdominal pressure starts to stretch the stomach forward. You get this upper part of the stomach. It has become shorter here. And this will become a little longer in length, and the navel will shift a little up here. That is, this distance will increase. This will decrease. And the most fabulous stomach is in your hands. You can hold it in your hands like this. The second option is this one. But of course, few people are interested. But just in case, I'll tell you. That is, this option when the stomach decreases. But in principle, I don't think anyone will be interested. 
Maybe it's not even worth telling. Well, okay, maybe someone will find who wants this. But this is a terrible state. That is a person who has no stomach. Nothing at all. Not behind the soul, not in the pocket. Such a person, I don't know. In short, this case, if you somehow decide that you need this ugly state of the stomach. Tucked in here, you need to choose an exercise when you train this lower part of the stomach. This is when you do the exercise in such a way that you have. Limp. Second. Here it is, and here there is not enough space for the navel. Here is such a, oops, umbilical hernia forms, and it starts to come out, but these two muscles, they spread apart. Here. They must not be confused here. So this exercise where this distance remains the same, and this decreases, it leads to this sad result like this. Here. And if you still want to do this, the side effect of this state is that the diaphragm, that is, the respiratory muscle, starts to work better. It becomes easier to breathe, as it were, and it's easier to maintain the position of the back. Here. Essentially, these are frightening in principle. Here, along with this, if you still want to do this, you need to increase this distance right here. Make it so that it becomes bigger here and right here so that it becomes a bit smaller. There, then, no matter what you do, this is your fate, it awaits. There. But still, I think most are interested in such a position. Because here, the limitation of chest mobility is manifested. The back muscles are always, they are under tension. They are always working. So, these exercises, I think, we'll figure out somehow. What do you think? I think we can figure it out but not today next time. So for now, just take this into account. And in the next, in the next video, God willing, we will go through all these exercises and how to do them. It sounds simple, doesn't it? How to achieve it from beginning to end. Unknown, I don't know yet myself. I'll check now. Textbooks. By how to approach culture. No, I know, I know. I'll demonstrate this as mobility is crucial here, right in this part. Without mobility in this part of the spine, between the sacrum and the lumbar, you won't be able to do this, but you will be able to do this. So, until we meet again, friends, this will be a gift for you. An early New Year's gift coming next week. Any day within a week, probably a working day. Goodbye.